Hey bookworms, happy spring! This is the prime time for vacations. And many of us use this time to go some places, travel, go camping, go to the beach, visit family. And the adventure you have is the main thing here. But on this channel, we talk about books. And we all know a good book is a great companion on a vacation. But how to choose the right book for your holiday? Well, in this video, I will share with you some unusual guidelines and recommendations for what books to bring with you on different types of vacations. So, let's get into it! Now, to those of you who are new here, first, hello, welcome, nice to have you here, this is my cat's tail. But also, know that I have a strange, cynical sense of humor, so don't take this list too seriously. I mean, I do stand behind everything I say and recommend, but also, this isn't an infallible guide to vacation books. So let's begin with our first vacation type, which is the road trip. On road trips, you spend many hours in one small space with a bunch of people you thought you liked, but might change your mind afterwards. Also, there is a big chance you are driving yourself, so first off, I'll suggest an audiobook. If you're driving, you can listen with your group as you drive, and if you're not, then you want to shut out the road trip noises, earphones are great for that. But you need something to keep you awake. Trust me, I had two trips I made across Germany when I felt way too tired to drive. This is an awful feeling, and yes, of course, course, I was responsible and stopped to rest, and you should too, please drive responsibly. But on the road, you want something to grip you, be entertaining, and hopefully something that will appeal to all group members. For this, I recommend one of my all-time favorites, The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Rest in peace. This is a beautifully written coming-of-age story that has elements of romance, mystery, Spanish history, tragedy, with a fantastic atmosphere, even though it's not actually fantasy, so even people who don't like fantasy can still enjoy it. When I used to work at a bookshop, we used to recommend this book to everyone. The next type of vacation is a beach vacation or a poolside vacation. As the name suggests, we will spend most of our time at the beach or pool, getting a tan, working on our strokes. Strokes? Strokes? Are these strokes? So for this vacation, I recommend a collection of short stories, because much like the book itself, I feel like those type of vacations are made of many small bits. You tan for half an hour, then you go and eat, then you go and swim, then you get a cocktail. And also, because safety is important and skin cancer is totally a real danger, between every story in the collection, you put on sunscreen. Yes, take it from a Middle Eastern, sunscreen should be reapplied every couple of hours. And while you're at it, drink some more water. No, you did not drink enough water. Now, for the short stories themselves, Alice Munro is a master, but the good thing is that you have them in every genre. Do you like dark fantasy? Read Neil Gaiman. Thrillers? Then it's Sherlock Holmes for you. And if you are a bit more niche, for example, you want to read the works of Japanese women in the 1960s, I'm sure that there is a collection for that as well. The next entry belongs in a different season, but I guess I might have some viewers in Australia. So next we have the cozy winter vacation. And even if you are going on adventures like skiing or sleighing or whatever it is people do in cold weathers, you're bound to have some downtime to dry up, maybe sit near a fire with hot cocoa and enjoy the coziness of winter. For this, you'll want something that you can read in an entire sitting or so, something fun after a long day of tiring, cold shenanigans. And for this, I recommend The Diary of Bridget Jones by Helen Fielding. It's cute, it's funny, it's lighthearted, but not dumb. It's written like a diary, so it's easy to read, and it takes place in England, so it really feels like a winter book. Although I can't think about Bridget Jones and not drinking something with alcohol in it, but to each his own. But if you like classics, but aren't a weirdo like me who can't stand Jane Austen, you can totally read Pride and Prejudice instead, which is what 
Bridget Jones is based on. So we talked about some vacation types, but what about the way to your destination? The next category is the flight book, something to read during your flight or train journey. And these books always seem to be either thrillers for men or cheesy love stories for women. But I decided to go on a different route. I mean, if you want to go with something generic, sure, read Harlan Coben or Karen Slaughter. But instead, I would like to look at the physical aspect as well, in case you're taking a physical book and not an ebook. These days, we all try to be minimalists when it comes to packing. We all know that it's cheaper to fly with only a trolley, so we need to be diligent. We have no space in our personal item for a Stephen King novel. Instead, let's take a short book, a small book, but it should still be interesting enough to keep you alive and sane throughout a flight. So I recommend The Mysteries of Pittsburgh by Michael Shaben, a book that, despite its title, isn't a mystery book. Instead, it's a grown-up coming-of-age story. I mean, the protagonist is in college, he's not 14. A story of friendships, loves, self-discovery. I completely believe you can finish this book in one sitting, but leave it to Shaben to create a book with depth, even though it's so short. Another option is Paul Auster, who also recently passed away. I haven't read many books by him, so I can't recommend something specific, but he's also very creative and wrote fascinating books. Most of them are also relatively short. But sometimes you don't want to, or can't, go to a fascinating exotic location for your holiday. But when you still have some time off of work, we often go on a staycation, a vacation where you stay at home. You can explore your hometown or just chill, which is something that I've done many times. I don't know if it sounds sad, but there were times where I just needed some time off work and, you know, to gather my strength. But in those times, we can still go on fantastic adventures through books. So for the staycation, I recommend reading about a fantastic different world. You can go science fiction, you can go fantasy, you can read The Golden Compass, where the world is almost like ours, or Dune, that also have some element to our world, even though it takes place on a different planet. Or you can go high fantasy, like Lord of the Rings, or even something in between, like the Chronicles of Narnia or the NeverEnding Story, where we start in our own world and enter a magical one. But for this entry, I choose to recommend the fantastic pun intended, Dragon Song by Anne McCaffrey. First off, it has dragons in it, or fire lizards, which is already good. But this is such a great story about a young woman fighting adversity in a world masterfully crafted by McCaffrey. This book isn't just interesting, it goes straight into your heart. It'll make your downtime so much richer. And if you can, go outside, to the balcony, to a park, to a garden, anywhere where you can just sit, read, and you will be completely lost in the book. Next is not as much where you go as it is the atmosphere of the vacation. Because even though we're here for fun, every now and then we find ourselves on a heavy vacation. Whether we stress our bodies a lot or learn too many things, or you might not even be on a fun vacation, but a more apprehensive journey with deeper or sadder themes. I'm reminding of my trip to Poland many years ago to learn about the Holocaust. It was a trip and it was very interesting, but visiting what used to be concentration camps and ghettos wasn't really fun. But for these vacations or trips, we need something lightweight to calm us down. However, I personally don't like reading frivolous, silly things on my downtime, so I won't go with the stereotypical nothing thriller or hollow love story. Instead, I would recommend reading something funny. And obviously, funny is in the eyes of the beholder, but one guy that can always pull me out of the heavy reality is Jasper Ford. How I did not put him on my list of funniest books, I don't know. Ford is strange and British, both seem to work well together, and he wrote books about comedy and the literary world. My favorite books by him are the two in the nursery crime series, The Big Over Easy and The Fourth Bear, where we follow detective Jack Spratt, first trying to solve the murder of Humpty Dumpty, 
and then the disappearance of Goldilocks. And if those two sound fantastically strange, then Ford is the guy for you. I just hope he will finally write the third book in the series. The next type of vacation is the family vacation. We all have different families with their own dynamics, but some things never change. That one aunt that insists on nosing in every detail about your life, that uncle that comes on vacation with his kids in order to let somebody else take care of them, and later talk about what a great daddy is for taking his kids on vacation. But one thing I will recommend when it comes to your family vacation book is to bring something you are willing to share, because either people will ask you what you're reading, or will ask to borrow it, so don't go too weird. Or do, that could also be kind of funny. But my recommendation for this entry is one of those books I honestly can recommend most people, and it's even youngsters friendly. I don't know about you, but in my family, I like to be the inspiration for the younger generations when it comes to reading books. And this book is Someone to Run With by David Grossman. This is a coming of age story, but I honestly think it can suit adults too. It's usually on regular adult fiction shelves in bookstores or translated fiction, considering the original isn't in English. And it's about a young man who finds a lost dog and decide to follow her in order to find her owners. And on the way, he realizes that said owner is on a mission of her own, a very dangerous and difficult one. This book isn't a tearjerker, but it definitely has some sad moments in it, without being too teenage angsty or heavy. I remember really appreciating it as a teenager because despite being written by an adult, it has a very sober look at teenagers, and as an adult, it doesn't lose its depth. Next, we have another situation-oriented entry, the boring downtime. This happens sometimes if you travel with a group and others need to rest and you don't want to, but have to wait for them. Or maybe you have a train ride in the middle of the trip or just need some downtime, but you don't really want to wind down too much. For these occasions, you need something that will grip you from the first page to the last word, something that will pass the time to make you forget you're actually waiting for something or someone. And for these occasions, I highly recommend The Truth About the Harry Cabert Affair by Joel Dicker. This is a brilliant, complex thriller about a young author who tries to solve the disappearance and murder of his mentor's lover. And it is just so good, so gripping, and it's not generic. It's a novel first and a thriller second. But don't watch the series. I only watched the first episode and they have a major spoiler for the solution. And trust me, you do not want spoilers for this book. And the last vacation type we have here is camping. And you know there's only one genre to bring on a camping trip, and it is horror. Yes, I know I said I won't pick any obvious stereotypical books, but come on, camping and horror go well together like classic literature and tea. So how scary should it be? Well, depends on how much you can handle. One of the best horror novels that I read in recent years is The Outsider by who else but Stephen King. Or if you want something interesting but not as intense and scary, you can go classic with The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Both books also have an element of a mystery to them. Other than that, you have The Ruins, which is about a group going on vacation and dealing with whores there, but I really didn't like that book. Seems fit, though. And guys, those were my unusual picks for different types of holiday books. What books would you take on a trip? Would you dare reading a really scary book on a camping trip? Would you take a poetry book on a beach vacation? And what about nonfiction? And are you even one of those people who bring books to vacation or just buy them at the airport or destination? By the way, I also have a little story to share. So when I was growing up, the Harry Potter books just came out. And every summer, my extended family and I went on vacation together and it would be cheaper to buy the books over there. So every year I would buy the newest Harry Potter book as it just came out and I would have to make sure to pre-order them. That was before the time where you could do it with a click of a button. I had to actually call the store or ask my mom to do that for me. I was 12. 
and then I would spend my downtime on vacation reading them. And when I was done, my sister would read the book. And when she was done, my mom read it. So that was a nice memory from vacations in a more innocent time. So guys, that is the end of my video. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you liked it. And if you did, don't forget to click the like button, share this video to your vacation buddies and subscribe to my channel for more bookish videos. And don't forget to write down in the comment section which books you like to bring on holidays. Guys, thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.